I am here today with Mr. David McCormack from a band called Custard. You know, how can you not like Custard? 90s rock superstars, right? 90s rock. No, 90s, noughties, you know, <laughs> rock superstars. Yeah, time. but if we make it too recent, people can sort of, uh, you know, check it. If we make it back in the 90s, no one's going to know. It's pretty and if, and if you turn up to a 90s rock superstar and they miss a note, you, you, give them, you cut them a little bit of slack. Absolutely. You've been around yeah. forever. How many, how many concerts have we been to, you know, Rolling Stones or whatever, where you turn up and they've been going for 50 years and do they they sort of resemble the sound, you know, everything else is fine, but the sound yeah. is not quite there. But anyhow. Yeah, enough. yeah. Geez, how old are they now? The stone, that'd all be early eighties, maybe or well they they'd have to be they started uh Yeah, let I'll Google it. Uh the the, the Beatles started officially in sixty two. So if you're gonna be that's officially they started actually in the late fifties. So yeah, right. 41 and, and, and 24 is 65 before you even put an age onto it. So they've got to be 80. Got to be 80. 80 years. 80 years. 80. 80. December 1943. How, how, old are you, how old are you, Dave? I'm 56 this year. You're a boy. Yeah, I'm a child, dude. I'm 66. So I've got 10 years on you. So make yeah, sure it's good you on you. respect your elders. Absolutely. Well, the best is yet to come, right? Yeah, it, it, we could. This is getting away from the interview a little, but the actual, it, I've got the answers, and I'm going to pull out a podcast because I know the answers to life. So okay. it's <laughs> going to be on a separate podcast, but it, it really is simple. And the simple truth is, in my view, that there's the moment, and there's obviously detachment from everything else. So you're just in the moment, and so you collaborate with whatever's happening here. It's got nothing to do with pain, getting away from stuff. It's got nothing to do with the description. It's got nothing to do with the story. And so you add those things once you're back. So once you've, once you've become conscious after years and months or whatever the period of time it takes, then you add in all the descriptive elements because you know how to deal with it because instead of just them being here, now you've got this observant element over the top. That's and observ right. Observance is where you live. And so it doesn't matter what age you are, yeah. At every age, you have, the, and it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, because at every age, no matter how rich or poor, you can do this. And if okay. you, if you're doing that in a, in a tin shed in you know down south, yeah, and someone's doing it in a palace, it's no different. Same, because same. It's just their personal experience. And then when you get to that place. And, you, and people get to that place unconsciously as well. But when you get to that place consciously, you turn up to everything more deeply. So your music... Okay, i got to get better. involved. It's, it's better. Anyhow, enough of all that, because we'll talk about this for hours. And, and That's good. Paul, Paul's going to punch me in the head. you got a little kiss. What's that kiss thing in the background there? I can't quite see it. Kiss. Oh, that's the... That's the, that's an old poster from back in the day. That yeah, right. Phantoms. So, nice. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, we used to be a pawnbroker, and I didn't keep looking. This conscious. This is this is going off track, Dave. What are you doing? You're not. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I don't even you. know what day it is. I keep thinking it's Monday, but it's Tuesday. Right. Let's get into it. So, so that now all the people who are interested now to find out because we've just enthused them. How yeah. did the band come together back in '89? Where did it all begin? So me and me and Paul Madrid, the bass player, we went to high school together. And then he left. He left in year, after year 10, I think, and then um, we just kept in contact and we started a band in Brizzy called Who's Gerald in the 80s, and that band was terrible. Oh, my God. The songs, like, and I thought I knew it. You know when you, well, maybe you weren't, but when I was 18, 19, I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew what to tell people to play and, oh, man. So, anyway, we, we kept in contact. Isn't it, a, isn't it a rite of passage? Oh, oh yeah, you no, just no, think, no, no, don't play this, play that, and wear that, and this is what it's going to be like. And then, uh, and then me and Paul stayed in contact, and we started up um, Custard because um, you know we were probably twenty by then, maybe I don't know. And so we recruited... Custard, Custard started in eighty nine, or yeah, eighty nine or ninety. I'm not really. And so you I'm... started how long before that in the in the in the school? In who's Gerald eighty six. 86, 86. 86. So it's been going even longer. Yeah. 40 years. 
And back then, um, universities were free, you know, remember in the 80s? God and bless, to, God bless, Goff. Goff. And we used to complain because we had student fees of $110 a year. <laughs> and it'd be like, how can we afford to put, anyway. Yeah, and so would... Queensland University in the 80s, you know, there was the rec club, there was the student union, they had a little carpeted room and a PA. So, you know, we could hire that room and get a band together and, and then how, like how had the capitalists fixed it all? Yeah. Made, good sure, on you. made sure everyone got charged, made sure yeah. Reith, Reith got rid of the unions. Yeah, it was all, all... I don't even know what it costs to go to university now, but it can't be cheap. It's your life. Heck, yeah. Six figures. So it's, a, it's an expensive sort of process. Well, it was also easy to be on um, the dole back then. The, the, that, well, you'd, you'd, um, it got pretty controversial when, you know, every two weeks you had to go put your little form in and you had to list a couple of employers that you went to <laughs> and that was all good until Custer's first album came out like in the early 90s and you know you go in for your review and they'd say so is there anything else that you're doing that you want to tell us about and I was sticking to my story nah nah it's cool I've just been applying for jobs and then they produced the compact disc of our first album on Rua, and they said, so is this you here? And I went, yeah, you got me. I'm off. And then we had the princely sum of, I think we paid, the band paid a wage to each member for, of $300 a, a week. It was huge. How rich are we? $300 a week? Boom, boom. Yeah, massive. All right, so what's happened since then? Uh, you know, what's happened sort of briefly in 25 words or less, you know, 90s, noughts, is it, is it members in, members out, same members? Yeah, no, nah, there was a, we had a couple of drummers and we settled on the, the current and longest lasting drummer, Glenn Thompson, in probably mid-90s. We had three or four drummers before him, but Glenn's pretty handy. He, uh, he does, he's great at artwork, so he does all the artwork. Um, he mixes all the album recordings now. Um, so he basically does everything. And me and Paul and Matthew just sort of um, fall in behind him and do whatever we can to help. All right, good work, good work. So 90s, 90s we were signed, you know, we were with Ruart that got sold to maybe BMG or Sony or something. So 90s was, was all about A&R people and trying to get on – Triple J and Triple M. And then 2000, Custard, you know, we didn't really talk for about 10 years. You know, just after all that time together, we all needed a little break from each other. So there was a 10-year hiatus. I reckon it was about 10 years, yeah. And then I, I got into doing music for TV shows and television commercials and everyone else did their own thing. And then in 2009, approximately... I think it, Powderfinger were doing this gig in Brizzy and it was Queensland's 150th, you know, anniversary or whatever. And it was on a big stage. So we said, yeah, we'll do it. So roughly we sort of got back together 2009 or 2010 and then it just kept it going since then. And this will be our fourth album in the sort of reformation period. Last 15 years. Yeah. How, how would you describe your sound? Um, unchanging. Unchanging. Sort of, I, I, haven't reckon, of, I haven't heard of that genre before. No, I, I reckon if you went back and listened to all of our albums, you'd be hard pressed to to differentiate. I reckon we we've got a formula and we're sticking to it. It's just perfect. You know. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, having said that, why do you think fans keep turning up? I don't know because the um, formula works. The formula works. They're not gonna. They're not gonna get any devastating lows, and the it's just gonna be. Oh yeah, this sounds like custard that I heard so many years ago. So, and I find song wise, I go, oh man, I'm doing a song that's pretty much like a song I did 25 years ago. Okay, cool. Let's just let's just do it. And especially with this album, because we're all as we were talking about getting older, you don't know how many more albums you're gonna make, so. That's why we put 21 songs on this one. Just like, let's get it out while we can, while we've still got our health. 
before we before we move on a little, did you did you ever think about performing with Cream? <laughs> Surely that must have gone through your head at some stage. <laughs> Um, imagine that would be good. Cast, that would be good. And cream. Absolutely. Does it, does it get any sweeter? Yeah, it gets the sweetest custard and cream. Well, um, what doesn't rhubarb? Don't people have custard and rhubarb as well? Is that well, like they, have, they probably have lots of lots of people have lots of things. Probably some people have custard and Vegemite. Yeah, or cu- they probably put custard in coffee. Maybe probably. I don't know, but custard okay. and cream. Yeah, good. Okay. Who are the who's been inspiring? Who 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 inspired you at the, throughout the journey? What other artists? Maybe what other performances? Okay, I like. Um, there was always a lot of Bob Dylan growing up in the McCormack House, but I don't think we've. I don't think I've appropriated any Bob Dylan stuff. But he's pretty vibey. Did you see that Bob Dylan documentary? Uh, Scorsese did No Direction no, Home. No, I never I was never a Bob Dylan fan. Yeah, I look. I, I'm into it. I'm into it. I know some people say he can't sing or whatever, but he's a... Uh... You can't really say that, really, because basically if you've got a following, you can sing. The yeah, totally. You if you can be it. heard, you can sing. And uh, no, I, so the Bob Dylan, and then like, the, you know what You know what band really I got into was the Cruel Sea. You know when um, yeah. This Is Not The Way Home, yeah, that yeah, record yeah. That came out. That was great. That, that was, was great. great, and you could see him down at, you know, the local pub and there'd be like 150 people there and they just and not that we are in any way shape or form like them but they were doing their own thing you know and you could listen to someone puts on a cruel c record and you instantly go oh wow that's the cruel c and i heard their new song um into the sun or whatever it is it still sounds exactly like the cruel c they, they're just well, if it ain't broke down fix exactly it. exactly so i think if I think I have admired and respected their ability to do the same thing for so many years. Okay. Uh, now let's, let's get deep. Your new album, Suburban Curtains is going to come out on October 11th, which is in a few days from now. Maybe it's, if it, when you see this, uh, it might be out already. Uh, what's it all about? Describe its origin and evolution. Uh, well, it's just about um, everyone getting together down at Glenn's house and saying, what songs you got? Let's sit around and just play them all. Um, everyone was just on acoustic guitars, which we never really done before. Normally we just make stuff up in the studio, but it was it was a good process. And we actually had chord charts this time, like cheat <laughs> notes. So uh, I, I guess as we're getting older too, that comes in really handy. But um, so the evolution was just the, the four of us getting together, what's everyone got? And then we went to Mona in uh, Tasmania. They've got a studio there that had a a desk from Abbey Road that the Beatles apparently recorded on. And we recorded on um, eight-track tape. Wow. So it was good to have the limitation of three drum takes, you know, three drum tracks, two guitar tracks, a bass, and a guide vocal. I think the old days. Yeah. yeah. And so when it came to mixing, it was pretty easy because you don't, Sometimes people have, you know, 32 different snare mics and stuff like that. So we just kept it simple. And um, I think this album's all just about, you know, getting down to the, getting down to work, come up with some songs, record them and put it out. And then Glenn came up with the name Suburban Curtains, which I sort of like, I, 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 it sort of reminds me of growing up in the suburbs of Brisbane in the seventies and eighties. And, our house and all of my friends' houses had those crazy 70s curtains, you know, those big, they probably called them drapes. Remember those big, heavy, yeah, mish thought, brown and cream sort of swirls? I thought suburban curtains, Glenn must be still taking drugs, is he? Because, you know, it's not really a... <laughs> <laughs> now, Glenn's like, he's straight edge, man. Straight. He's, he's, he's given up, he's vegetarian, he's given up the booze, he's like... Mate, when you get older, you got to because it doesn't work if you don't. Nah, it doesn't work like it used to, does it? No, it doesn't come back. You just don't. You don't come. You don't wake up at four o'clock, you know, drunk, and then at six o'clock go to work. Sort of. Nah, nah. Like I love, I love. Um, yeah, we'll have a couple of beers when we're doing gigs, but it's so um, 
it's so boring and old of me now. Like it's it's sort of um, fun to not drink too much and have big sleeps. <laughs> your what are the what are the signature tracks on the album, and which uh, are, which are your favourites? My favourites. Uh, there's one that's a, a really old one. It's called um, "Getting Over You," and it's sort of I, I I reckon I must have come up with that one and just had it sitting around for like twenty years. So it's great to just finally go, oh, shit, I remember that song. Let's record that. And there's, an, there's another one called FNQ about North Queensland, which um, it, it's weird. It's just like a sense of place. I'm born and bred in Queensland, but I've lived in Sydney for a, couple, a while now. But um, And we went to North Queensland last year, and it was as soon as I landed, I just felt so at home. It's got such a different vibe up there in the deep north. You know, and it's it just looks different. The light's different. It's hot as, and the people Look, are people are good. I lived in Sydney for eighteen months a couple of years ago, and um, being a Melbourne boy, uh, I loved I loved Sydney. But you know, maybe it was the drugs I was taking because Sydney, <laughs> Sydney, That's Sydney is Sydney. It's a it Sydney's is, a bit of it's a, it's a, it's not the best. Place in the world. I won't say that because we've got lots of people around the place, but but it's not you know I prefer Melbourne myself. Or yeah, Queensland. yeah. Queensland's pretty cool. Queensland's yeah, Queensland's cool. cool. Sydney, hot. Sydney. I bet if you're like stupid rich, it'd be a really nice place to be stupid rich. Even stupid rich people can't afford it. Yeah, the stupid place. I've just found you on the internet. Which track do you want me to listen to off the album? Um. Okay, you're in Melbourne, right? Yeah. So listen to it. There's one called I Never Loved Melbourne Until I Met You. <laughs> That'll be perfect for you. It's perfect. And what about all time? I've got to, I've got to understand who Custard is. What's the song you're going to say? Listen to this song and you'll come to our next show. <laughs> we don't have one of those. Um, let's, I'll go to Spotify and see what the most popular one is. Hang no, on. no, no, no. This is a this is an interview. You're not allowed to use. Okay, no cheat notes. Resources here. Okay. Um. Well, why don't you go? Um. Oh, hang on. No, there you are. Uh. Go. If if you wanted to get a feel for it, look up a song called Apartment. I think that'd sort of give you an idea. Done. Okay. okay. The world tour starts on November 9th. I mean, I'm I'm taking an Americanism there because they don't know that any other country exists apart. No, from they got the so, World Series and so, it's just so, like them. So we're we're doing a world tour here. What are you looking forward to? What can the fans expect? A uh, couple of new songs, a couple of old songs, and um, no frills. Good. No extra, no extra bits and pieces, bibs and bobs. It's just the formula. The formula works. Four old guys. Combined age of maybe 220 and two guitars, bass and drums and singing. Go and have fun. You're playing with the Forbes and the stress of leisure. You yeah. Know, you know them well? Yeah, they're great. The Forbes we played with a lot in the 90s and stress of leisure. Uh, I'm fairly new to their music, maybe a couple of years, but they're cool. I think, I think um, all three bands share a love of loud guitars, and a healthy disrespect for the music biz. Perfect. Wow. The music business. Is there someone with a healthy respect of the music <laughs> Seriously. But that's the way it's always been. It hasn't yeah. changed. There's always, where there's executives running things or labels or whatever, they're always going to find some way to say, just like social media today, we're going to do you such a favour, we're going to bring in streaming. So instead yeah. of making... Instead of making 50% of every CD you sell, you can make 0. 0.00005 cents of every stream that you get. Yeah, Aren't I know. You happy? Aren't you happy? Yeah, it's, in, it's insane, isn't it? It's insane, insane. But I'm still <laughs> old school, like, and, and you go and you look and you go, oh, wow, our song got streamed a thousand times last week. And that's like Dot. one cent. Got. Um, if you could perform with any music artist, alive or dead, who would you choose and why? Um, alive or dead? Okay. Well, they're not going to be dead on stage. They're going to be back alive. If yeah, okay. Alive. Well, let's go Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix. Oh, let's just jam it out with king. Hendrix. The king. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, what a really, trailblazer. 
and America you, didn't want him. He had to go to the UK to to get started. And if you really get into him and understand him, he's he's a he's a traditional muser. You know, we see all these just you know extreme sort of shots and all this sort of stuff, and think that he's just some riff sort of. But he's a he was a really thinking muser. Yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic muser. And the recordings and. The, you know that um, cross town traffic's got the gazoo in it. You know the yeah, 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 yeah. so so creative and you know getting back to those eight channels or whatever, they just uh, it just jumps out of the record. I love it. Uh, do you still have any long term aspirations? No. Nah. At fifty six, I'd suggest don't don't. But no, nah. nah. I got none. I'm happy. Well, that's good with the with the Dave Bruce principle of living in the moment. So you don't yes. need any long term aspirations. I don't need nothing. Okay. With that in mind, having lived all this existence, what's the advice that you're going to give the the three people that look at this interview? <laughs> um, if they're young, don't sweat it too much. Just be in the moment. Do do what you think good, right, and. Don't listen to other people. No. Don't, I wouldn't. If I could go back, I'd just, I'd just be free and easy. And, that, and just... that, that is what you learn. What I, what I think you have the potential to learn. A lot of people still haven't learned it. Is that uh, there's an opportunity cost in every moment. Every moment has the same potential. And so whether you're walking, it has the same potential as getting an award. You know, they all are yeah. differently. So they feel differently because. A million people are applauding or, you know, you're just seeing a cricket on the side of the road. But for you, the experience can be exactly the same. And and if you think about the Mandela experience, he's in a prison cell, but he's living a fuller life than most people out of it. Once he works out that he just stops and lives in the prison cell. Absolutely. He's about living somewhere else. So I'd agree. Just, just okay. be yourself, do yourself, and that's the best thing. Do your thing. Here we go. We're going to go into some uh Final sort of uh, probably eight or ten questions that are just okay. quick and easy. Great. Uh, these are pretty in depth, though. Some of these. Uh, okay. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? And this, uh, is record this is recorded, so the police will be listening. <laughs> craziest thing I'm I've ever. For, I'm waiting for someone to come and say, "Oh, back in '90, we carved up these three people when we were blind, drunk, and no one ever found out." You know. Well, like, yeah, maybe I don't know, but it no, the craziest thing I ever done was, was you know, when you start in a van and you decide to drive from Brisbane to Melbourne nonstop in a van with two seats, <laughs> and you're sleeping, you're sleeping in the back, or you're trying to sleep where the engine is, you know, in the middle of the van to stay warm. Just crazy young stuff like that. I'd never crazy. even consider that now. Crazy. Uh, you know, we you, have you played down the Brisbane in uh, Tassie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we stayed at the Brisbane one time and they said, we'll give you a room and all that sort of stuff. So I said, great, no problem. So we played, we went up to the room and they've got the bar underneath the room with the oh. jukebox going till four o'clock in the morning. Oh, dude, no. Thank you, mother, for the chickens. Yeah. And just talking about the van thing, just quickly, um, Grohl, uh, when he went from, um, what's his name, um, Cobain, when he went from there, he made his millions and all that. When he started out with Foo, he made them tour in the same bus that they started out. Um, and, and it was Ugh. like they've got millions and they're travelling around in this uh. bus. He said, we have to do it because it's it's the way to go. Okay. What, what's the one topic you can talk about for hours? Uh, probably, at the moment, American politics. But probably uh, historically, uh, you know, that band Devo. I was a big Devo fan back in the Devo. Uh, uh, if you're not like, if you're not left wing, I'm hanging up right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm as left as they come. I'm as left as they come too. I could talk to you about politics for years. I know. Yeah, 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 you can see here. I've got, I've got American politics on. Is that CNN? What's that? No, that's MSNBC. I don't listen to. Oh, CNN. yeah, good. But CNN's gone a bit too right wing for me. That's it. Okay. No. Okay. I, I, Yep, MSNBN is good. Yeah. Uh, what's the thing you like most about yourself? Uh, my height. How tall are you? I don't know, about six foot. <laughs> Feels pretty good, though. That's, that's a good, good answer. I haven't heard that one before. Okay, let's finish with some favourites. These are really, you know, you want resources for these. Favourite album? Uh, white album, The Beatles. 
still. Yeah, I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. Favorite artist? Bob Dylan. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Who else is good? No, 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 no. no. That's good. That's a good selection, but it's like he hasn't he hasn't made any music for 40 years. Yeah, I know, but it, the stuff he did make is still pretty good. It, it is, it is. It was it's sort of groundbreaking. Favorite movie? Um No Country for Old Men, Cohen Brothers. Oh, I probably the... watched that about 50 what, times. What is he scary? It's so good. He is the scariest dude. Uh, he's also in uh, uh, quite a few uh, South American movies as yeah. well and all that. Bart, yeah. Bartum's the best, I agree. Yeah. Favourite place to visit? Um, North Queensland. Far North Queensland or just far, North Queensland? FNQ, Far North Queensland. Favourite venue to play? Ooh, Sydney Opera House Steps. There you go. That's that's not a bad. Is that a venue? The steps, maybe. Yeah. Wait, well, back in the nineties, Crowded House were doing their farewell to the world concert, yeah. and they invited us and uh, you and I to sort of open, uh, and uh, that yeah. was that was the really fantastic. I felt like a proper rock star. Hester was Hester was around then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was still drumming. God, God rest his soul. Uh, favorite food, Indian. Favorite drink, beer. It's cheap. Favorite person in history? Uh, you, you can say me. You, you've met me now. Favorite person in history? Leonard Cohen. Ah, oh, what a legend. The songs of Leonard Cohen's one of my favorite albums. Uh, 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 he's a legend. He's a legend. Yeah. Again, you know, Dylan's unique, Cohen's unique. You know, they're right, yeah. unique people. And, you know, you know, there's lots of bands that you say, yeah, I know their songs, but. You know, if you forgot their name you, and they were playing, you'd probably think of three or four other people. But yeah. when, you, when you hear those people, you, you don't think of anyone. And, what, and let it go in sense of humour is vastly underrated. Like some of his songs are funny. Really? Yeah. Wow. He can afford to be when you've got talent like that. Yeah. And uh, Tattoo, you got a tattoo? Yeah. The Chief. Is that the, the, only, is that the favourite? That, that was my dog that dearly uh, departed now, but I had the chief from 98 to 2000 and th 2013. Can't, I can't do pets, unfortunately. Yeah, but fair enough. Lost. That was the lost. last one. I lost my mum in when I was a teenager, and I just can't deal with loss. So, you know, anything that, you have, that you're going to lose, yep. uh, I'd rather not lose it. Yep. But that's it, dude. Good on you. What a lovely, fun. what a lovely chat! I really enjoyed it. Uh, Thanks for a lovely chat. No worries, mate. Yeah. All the best.